guys, welcome to Cree Chats. I am Cree, and in today's episode of Cree Chats, I am going to be doing a request that I got from a subscriber. She wanted me to um, do a video talking about pricing and basically how you figure out about you know how much you want to charge for your services, your price list, um, your price range, all of that good stuff. So we're just gonna go ahead and get into that. Yes, basically, whenever you are um, an entrepreneur, you're offering a service. Um, you have to make prices, of course, and it's not as easy as it seems to make prices. It's a lot that you have to consider when you're thinking about um, how much you want to charge for a particular service. Um, you guys know that I do hair, so for me, I have to think about everything I'm going to need for that service. Of course, the time, um, if I'm traveling to them, um, I'm going to have to think about... Um, uh, I think that's basically it. You just want to take into consideration how much time it's going to take you to do it and what you're going to need to do it um, and how good you are at it. And that's about all you need to know to basically base off your um, your prices, how you need to, you know, regulate your prices and things like that. I know for me, if the products that I'm using for something, if I have to use really expensive products to do a certain service, it's going to be more because I'm using expensive products. My prices, you know, are going to be more so it's going to reflect the products that I'm using. If I'm doing something that takes me 20 minutes to do, then it's not going to, you know, be charged for $100, $200 because it's only 20 minutes of my time. And I'm probably not using that much stuff. That's why you kind of see people charging different prices for different things. Like you can have two people that do box braids. One person takes three hours to do it. Another person takes six hours. Actually, you might think that the person that takes six hours is going to charge more because more of that time. But really, if you can do a service quicker, you can charge more for it. If I'm doing box braids and I can do a full head of box braids in three hours, that's going to be more pricey than somebody that's going to do it in 10 hours. Because you're going to want to be at the shop in three hours versus 10. So, um, yeah, your efficiency is going to be so... Yes, how efficient you are at that style is going to determine how much your price should be. And also, like I said, the price of your products. Um, I don't have anything here right now, but I have a serum um, and it's 30 something dollars for a little bottle of it. And then I have another one and it's like 12. So if I'm using that $30 bottle of serum and it's this big and I need like this much for your service, I'm going to have to charge you accordingly because that's damn near half my dollar on bottle of syrup and if i'm doing something with a 12 dollar bottle i'm not gonna charge that much because it's only a 12 dollar bottle you know what i'm saying you want to base your prices off of that um also you want to make sure that you are allowing your clients to pay for what they're getting be very realistic with your work if you know that you are buying and making wigs if you know that you know, maybe you are um, in the fitness business and you're way better at doing meal preps than you are at doing actual fitness plans, then make sure your prices are listed accordingly. Don't be like, oh, well, everybody wants, you know, the fitness plan, so let me just bump up the price on that, even though I'm way better at meal preps. People are going to respect, people are always going to pay for what they want. That's the first thing. If I'm trying to $500 to do two braids, if somebody wants them two braids by me, they're going to pay $500. It does not matter. People are always going to pay for what they want. So don't ever be like, oh, I'm charging too much. Or, oh, I'm not charging enough. Or, oh, don't ever trip about not charging enough or feeling like people are not going to go to you because of your prices. Base your price off of what you think your work is worth. And don't be like, damn, if I do, you know, if I'm doing like, I need to do a deal. I'm going to do like a full sleeve for like $50. Like I'm a tattoo artist. I'm going to do a full sleeve for $50. Nikki, you crazy. Me must be crazy. Like that's ridiculous. Don't give your stuff away and make your prices cheap as fuck because you want people to come to you. If people like you and they believe in your work, they believe in your work ethic, they see the picture they want it, they don't pay for it. Because I know for me, if it's something I want, I'm gonna pay for it. Like I make all of my wigs. Nobody has ever made a wig for me. Nobody has ever sold a wig for me. But I know that I want a wig from Tokyo Styles. I know it's gonna cost me two thousand dollars. And when I get that two thousand dollars, I'm gonna get that wig. Okay? You know what I'm saying? Whenever I get it, I'm gonna get what I want. I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna make it happen. So you should feel the same way about your product. People like what you do. People like what you got going on, so they're gonna pay for it. So make sure that your prices reflect how good you are how long it takes you to do it, and also the products. And it's kind of tricky to think of a price list before you actually get going. I think a very good base for your price list is to keep everything under $100 when you're first getting started off. Now again, I'm a hairstylist, so this is 
for me, what I would do, if I'm not used to doing box braids, if I'm not used to doing sewing wigs, if I'm not used to doing roller sets, if I'm not used to making wigs and installing wigs, I don't know how long it's going to take me. You might be here all day. You might be here an hour. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how good I am at it because I haven't done that much. So I literally would only keep my, I would keep my prices under $100. And then after I see, damn, I can do a full head of box braids in two and a half hours. This is not a $100 service. This is closer to a $200 service because I can get you in and out of here in two and a half hours for a full head of box braids. That's really, really good. Or, damn, I'm really bomb with these sewings. These sewings look like they're going out their scalp. I'm not going to charge $70 for these anymore. I'm going to charge $130 or $140. You know, once you start with a basic price range, then you'll be able to move up. Um, You might even want to be like, you're doing all your services for $70 or you're doing all your services for $100. You could just do a flat rate of $100. Um, but I think it's better to start on the lower end of things. Now, I'm not telling you to do no services for $10, but I for sure am not telling you, okay, to start off and be charging somebody $300 for a sewing when you don't even know how to thread a needle. You know what I'm saying? Make sure that your prices reflect how long you've been doing it, how experienced you are, how efficient you are in it. Don't make nobody pay a whole bunch of money when you don't know what you're doing. Because word is going to spread. You know what I'm saying? And you're going to want that business. You're going to want that clientele. The biggest thing, though, is that you don't want to worry that you're charging too much. Don't ever think you're charging too much for a service because... Um, as long as you're being realistic with yourself and you know this is what you're worth, I'm not you not being extra, you're not being dramatic, you're being realistic and you know what you're worth. As long as you know what you're worth, you can charge whatever you want for whatever you want, as long as you know what you're worth. Now, if you're being ridiculous and overpriced, everybody gonna come to you, but you shouldn't charge that much anyway. But if you know that you're doing a good job, you do a quick job, it's efficient, you're hospitable, you do, you got a nice shop, you might be doing that at your career. You got a nice place in your house that you're doing it, you got a good customer service, somebody takes you, you hit them right back, they wait three, four, five days for a reply, then you can charge what you want. You got quality products, you can charge what you want. But be realistic with yourself and understand, if you're doing bullshit, you need to have bullshit prices. Okay guys, hope this video was helpful for you about, um, you know, just how to build up your prices um, and build up your price list whenever you get started with your own business. I know I talk a lot about being a cosmetologist and being a stylist a lot, but that's because that's what I know. That's my life. Um, but this just isn't for people who are cosmetologists. Like I always say, you know, if you're an entrepreneur, you can go off of the things that I say. You know what I'm saying? I think that the advice I give is you know, it caters to entrepreneurs in general, but specifically hairstylists, of course, because that's what I am. But any entrepreneur can, you know, understand having a price list and being like, okay, I'm an event planner or something. How much should I charge? It's like, okay, well, how long is your how long is your turnaround? How good are you at doing this? How much money? What's your budget? You know, things like that. So I kind of feel like everything kind of goes into the same spiel, into the same tea. So as always, leave suggestions down in the comment box below. Turn on those notification bells. Subscribe, please, girl. We're still trying to get a thousand before the end of the year. And I know it's going to happen because I have you. So that's really all I need, okay? So yes, like I said, follow me on all of my social media. Stay tuned for more stuff. Like I said, I'm shooting this in my bathroom, in my new apartment in Dallas. So if you guys want to see my new apartment, then click the video before this one. It's an empty apartment tour. It's my very first vlog. So also let me know how you guys feel about vlogs. I like doing them, so let me know if y'all like them so we can keep getting it popping, okay? Thank you as always, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.